Everybody good? Summertime's here, right? Who's got like allergies you're just really struggling with? Yeah, okay. We're all in the same boat together. I feel your pain as well, so understand completely. Uh, man, I love that last song we were singing. I love, I love it because we sing about the resurrection. We sing about the death, the cross, and the resurrection. But what I love about our church, and I don't know about you, but I love this church. Do you love this church? Because, you know what, because you guys, man, and I say you guys, I mean all of us, you know, uh, I, I love a church where people love coming to church. I've heard people go into a church and talk about church, but they get in there and they don't look like they're having any fun or they look like they're just kind of sour. And I'm not saying we walk in here with plastic smiles on our face, but, but I love this place and that we can sing about the cross and the resurrection and we believe it. We believe what happened. And so tonight we continue to celebrate that, thankful for this worship team that we have. Uh, I've been saying this. Yeah, we can give some praise for that. Um, I've been saying this since we've been here, uh, that please don't take that for granted because that doesn't happen. What we have here doesn't happen very often. It doesn't happen in most churches. And so let's make sure we uh, not take that for granted. What I also love about this church, and one of my prayers as we as a church at Hillview Heights, that we are a church about the Word of God. And I love that. I love how Pastor Steve and Pastor Jamie, man, they preach the Word of God. And my prayer is that not only do we come and listen to the preaching of the Word of God, but that every single day that you are in this Word, that you have God's Word. It's something that we take for granted. I mean, it really does. I'll never forget years ago, Holly and I and our son Brian, back in 2004, I think it was, we were in Uganda, Africa. And we were in this little remote village and doing some discipleship with this brand new church that was there and we, we brought our Bibles out, and you would have thought we brought out, like, um, what's something that's really valuable? Uh, gold, okay, gold. And they were like, man, and one lady in, in Holly's Bible study that afternoon turned to Holly and just simply said, could, could I touch your Bible? And all these folks in this, this church, this early church, new church, they had, like, one Bible between, like, in the whole town, and I just thought, man, we got Bibles probably like half a dozen in our homes, do we not? And so my prayer is that we are a church that we read the Word every single day. Because if you ask me, there are several ways that God has manifested himself to us. He's done that, obviously, through his son, Jesus Christ, that we just sang about. He's done that when he gave us the Holy Spirit. But he's also given us the, his Word. And I believe this is the very heart of God that this is, uh, this is God's actual words in here. And a lot of times people say, well, I, I'm, I'm praying for God's will in my life. I want to know God's will in my life, but never read this. And I believe if you read this, it will transform you on, from the inside out. And it will change how you, how you see people, how you see life. It will change you completely. So let that be part of your spiritual disciplines in life is being in the Word every day single day. If you don't have a Bible, you come up here afterwards and say, Jeff, can I get a Bible from you? We're going to get you a Bible. You're not sure how to study the Bible? We want to teach you how to study the Bible. Because I'm, I think we all know how to read the Bible, but do we know how to study the Bible? And then, most importantly, we read it, we study it, and then we do what it says. And it will transform us from the inside out. And so, tonight, I want us to look at a group of people who are all about the Word of God. They were all about teaching the Word of God. They were appointed uh, the ones to teach the Word of God. They're called the Pharisees. But yet, these Pharisees we're going to look at, although they were in love with God's law, the first five books of the Bible, the Torah, they knew it frontwards and backwards, but yet they did not have the right heart and understand the right spirit behind the letter of God's Word. And so if you've got a Bible, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 23, and we're going to look at this story here of a group of people, and they were devout readers and teachers of the Bible, but again, they focused so much on the letter of the law, they missed the spirit behind it. Matthew 23, starting in verse, I'm going to kind of 
jump around a little bit here, and then we're going to zoom in on one verse tonight and focus on that. But I want to set this up a little bit here because I think anytime we read Scripture, we need to look at the context and what's going on and sometimes kind of zoom out before we zoom in on something. And so I want us to read the, a little bit of what's going on here to set it up, and then I want us to zoom in on one verse tonight. My prayer is that we walk away here tonight changed because we've been in God's Word. And so here's what's going on. Jesus, starting in verse 1, Matthew 23, Then Jesus spoke to the crowds and, his, and to his disciples. The scribes and the Pharisees are seated in the chair of Moses. Therefore, do whatever they tell you and observe it, but don't do what they do because they don't practice what they teach. So right now we know the audience, what's going on here, and who Jesus is talking to. He's talking to the crowd, and he's telling them, don't be like the Pharisees and the scribes. Now, I don't want to take for granted we all know what a Pharisee and a scribe is. Maybe you didn't grow up in church and understand those kinds of terms, but, you know, a Pharisee is basically someone who was a religious group, and they, I really believe they meant well. They were highly respected, and they knew the Bible, frontwards and, Bible, frontwards and backwards. They knew the first five books because that's all they had at that time. They had Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and making sure you're listening. And they had those first five books, and they knew it frontwards and backwards, and they were, they were solid teachers. And then you had the scribes, and the scribes were like experts in the law, and they would write out contracts and things like that. But they had knowledge of the law. And Jesus is saying, listen to them, but don't do what they say. Don't do what they say. The scribes and the Pharisees are seated in the chair of Moses, Therefore, do whatever they tell you and observe it, but don't do what they do because they don't practice what they teach. And you know, Jesus is saying to them, give them the respect that's due because of the office that they hold, okay? But don't do what they do because they're not, they're not carrying out what they are telling you to do. It's kind of like the office of the President of the United States. Now, you may not like whoever's in office, whatever season of life. But you know what we're supposed to do? We are supposed to give respect to that particular office and to that particular seat because of the authority behind it. And so Jesus, in essence, is telling, telling these, the crowds here the same. So Jesus picks up, let's pick up the story here in verse 4. Jesus says, They tie up heavy loads that are hard to carry and put them on people's shoulders, but they themselves aren't willing to lift a finger to move them. They do everything to be seen by others. They enlarge their phylacteries and lengthen their tassels. And you're thinking, do you know what a phylactery is? Okay. So back then, back in the days, Pharisees would wear these little, like, leather, kind of square box-looking things on their head. And inside of the box is basically uh, scriptures. And so scriptures to help remind them about, isn't that kind of weird? You walk around with a little brace. I mean, look, Google it out. You'll see it. And it's kind of weird looking. They got this box right here, and it's full of scriptures, and that's to help them to, to pass out to people as they go when they're teaching. And Jesus is saying, man, they are enlarging their phylacteries and lengthening their tassels. They love the place of honor at banquets from the, the, the seats, the front seats and the synagogues, greeting in the marketplaces, and to be called rabbi by people. They love the title. They love the title that's going on here. And so Jesus, he's at a point here. And he is, uh, he's about to lay down what we call the, the seven woes of Jesus. And seven woes. He's about to kind of put these Pharisees and scribes and kind of come down on them and, and put them in their place with absolute love because that's what Jesus does. But he's going to be stern with these, with these Pharisees and with these scribes here. And the seven woes come into play here. And, and you know, a woe is basically, it's, a, it's an exclamation of grief and public condemnation. So Jesus is about to throw down on the Pharisees and the scribes. Because you see, this, again, the, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were supposed to be about helping people to get to know God, to understand the word of God, to understand the law. But instead, what they did is they would add to God's law, putting more burden on people's shoulders, making things a whole lot more difficult for people to follow God. And I don't know about you, but I don't think following God is really difficult. He's given us all kinds of instruction. He's given us the Holy Spirit 
So when you say, God, would you come near to me? He can't get any nearer in you if you're a believer. He's inside of you. So following Jesus, if you ask me, it's not like a... Dip, but these, these Pharisees and scribes are trying to pour on more and more and make it really burdensome for people to follow. And their religion was not the heart of a true worshiper of God, but it was really rooted in pride. And Jesus just got done saying, don't listen to them. Don't do what they say. Respect and honor them, but don't do what they say because they're just in it for the title. And then Jesus throws out all these woes. Now, we're not going to look at all the woes. We're going to zoom in on one tonight, and it's Matthew 23, verse 23. It's the fourth woe. Listen to what it says here. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Now, you'll notice all the other woes before and after start off just like that. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Ever been called a hypocrite before? I remember middle school. And I was a believer. I was a Christian. And, man, this guy in my church, my youth group, called me a hypocrite. And it stung. It hurt because he was right. I was being a hypocrite about some things in my life. And so Jesus here, he's laying out seven hypocrites to them. You know, that's pretty heavy. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. You pay a tenth of mint, dill, and cumin, and yet you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, faithfulness. These things should have been done without neglecting the others. He goes on in verse 24, blind guides, you strain out, the, you strain out a gnat but gulp down a camel. And this fourth woe, Jesus is calling out these Pharisees and these scribes for their practice of diligently paying the tithe. And that's a good thing because I believe it's biblical that we tithe. But these Pharisees got so focused on the tithe that Jesus says they missed out on the important matters of the law. And maybe in your, maybe in your translation it says the weightier things of God. They're missing out on the big things because they're so focused, they're so focused on mint and dill and cumin, they're focused on spices, and they're missing out on the weightier things. I, I brought some mint tonight. Went to my local Kroger, picked up some mint. This bag smells really good. My car smells really good. Mint. Now, can you imagine how crazy this looks for these Pharisees, teachers of God's law, and they are so focused on the paying of the tithe of their spices that they're missing out on the important things of life. And they're over there going, one for me, one for the temple. One for me, and one for the temple. Sounds kind of crazy, knowing that there's needs all around. But where are they focused? Right here. It's what, it's what Jesus says. Man, you are so focused on the mint and the dill and the cumin. And know this. Listen, their tithing, it was meticulous and noteworthy, but it was hypocritical. It was hypocritical because it served to soothe their guilt of their neglect of the things that really matter. And what are the weightier things? And Jesus goes on and says, these are the weightier things of God that we need to be focused on, things of justice, things of mercy, and faithfulness. And Jesus is telling them, you guys are simply missing it, and you're sitting here, you're counting your mint leaves, and you're missing out on what's really important. So aren't you glad that we are not like Pharisees and scribes? That we get so, you know, we, we don't do that, do we? We don't get so focused on mint leaves, and we miss out on the weightier things of God. Do, we don't do that, do we? Man, we're all lying if we say that we're not. You know, Pastor Jeff Crabtree, the other Jeff, or some people call him the old Jeff, which makes me the new Jeff, or Hefe. Some of these guys call me Hefe. Anyway, yeah. So, so Pastor Jeff, sometimes he'll use a phrase, maybe you've heard it before, he'll say, man, I am a recovering Pharisee. Have you heard Jeff say that before? And I, you know, and, and you know what, I can identify. Man, I am a recovering Pharisee. There's been times in my life in following Jesus that I got more focused on counting the mint leaves 
than the weightier things of God. I got so focused, even in the midst of doing great things for God, even in the midst of, a, of like mission trips, I got so focused on counting mint leaves that I missed out on what really matters the most. And you know what? I, I mean, I, sometimes we're no different than the Pharisees. We're not. I never forget. <laughs> I took a group of college students when we were back in Richmond, Kentucky. I was serving at, uh, at the BCM at Eastern Kentucky University. And four years ago, we took a group of college students to Long Island, New York for a uh, spring break mission trip. And we went up there and we did some Hurricane Sandy relief. And we got up there, and it was a long, long road. It was like 12, 14, 15 hours to get there. We get all the way there, and, and the place is still a mess. This is like three years after the hurricane hit, and the place is still a mess. And so we're up there, and we're serving. Man, we are ready to go and serve people in Long Island, New York. And they, they, they take our team, and they split us into two. And so those who are part of my team, we went to this house, and this house, obviously on the outside, man, it had, you know, it had taken some really hard damage from the hurricane. Uh, it was pretty bad. But on the inside, it was even worse. But you know what? Some of the stuff on the inside, I, I kind of look around thinking, man, there's this stuff, th this is not Hurricane Sandy stuff. This is just, this is like just hoarder kind of stuff. You amen in hoarders? That's the first time that I actually looked and, okay, I'm going to leave you alone, Miss Linda. You're amening hoarders. I'm telling Jamie on you about that, okay? I'm not going to give you a chance to respond, okay? But this house on the inside, man, it was, it, it was, it was awful looking. And there's no way, there's no way that the, how the inside looked was because of Hurricane Sandy. And maybe you're thinking, Jeff, how do you know that? I know that because in the middle of the living room in this house was like a 300-pound pot belly pig. Kid you not. Think I'm lying? There it is. A pot belly pig in the middle of this house. And they had it kind of like we're in the kitchen doing work. And we went there to do like drywall and paint and we even did wiring and all kinds of stuff to this house. And there was this pot belly pig in the middle of the house. And he's got, you know, we, we actually even played a game called Slap the Pig. And remember that movie, uh, what, was it, what was it called, Wild, Wild Hogs? Slap the Cow? We did Slap the Pig, all right? And, and anyway, anyway, get distracted. All right, so in this house, the pig's going on, and it's, it's a mess. But yet we know, God, you called us here to work on this house. And that's what we were doing for a couple days. And then one day, I think it was like on the Thursday, we're, we're back there and we're working and the, the pig's right there doing the pig thing. And in the front of the house, the son comes home. The son's like 21, 22 years old. He comes in and he sits down and turns on the TV and he starts watching or playing Xbox. Now in my mind, I'm thinking, wait a minute now. You're, you're 21, 22 years old, and we, we drove 15 hours to help put your house together, even with your pig, and yet you're up there playing the Xbox, you know? And I'm thinking, what? Now, now I, I didn't vocalize that. I was just thinking that, okay? And then later on, later on, while he's playing the Xbox and we're still working, some of his friends come in, and, and there's a bike, I don't know, five or six of them up there, you know, playing the Xbox, and the next thing you know, we're all, we're working and we hear them. And then we smell something. And these guys, man, they begin to fire up, man, pot. They lit up a doobie, all right? They, they're smoking pot up there. And we're back here working. And I'm thinking, are you kidding me? And I mean, at this point in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, all right, all right. And then, so they're doing their thing. And so then the mom comes home, and she, man, she is super sweet, super nice. And she is so thankful for what, you know, just kind of what we've been doing and, and coming and serving her. And she is just repeatedly over and over and over again just saying, man, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, then she goes in her bedroom, and she begins to smoke pot too. 
All right? So then there's more. It gets worse. So then the, the, the people in the house, the mom, they, they lease, they got a bedroom underneath the house, like in the basement, and they lease it out, and that person comes home, and they start smoking pot. And everybody's smoking pot. And we got pot in the front, we got pot downstairs, and pot in the bedroom, we got a pot belly pig. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what are we doing? And you know what? In my, in my teenage years, I'm so thankful to say that I never smoked pot, but I'll be honest with you, that day, I think a lot of us were a little bit contact high. <laughs> we were. Everything was funny. We got kind of hungry, all right? I mean, it was crazy. But all this is going on, and then I verbalized it and said to my group, to my team, I said, I cannot believe we drove 15 hours to come serve this family and look what's going on. And as soon as I got that out, the Holy Spirit said, hey, Jeff, why'd you come serve? Did you come to serve for, for them or for me? Did you come? I know, it hurt. Man, God, man, the Holy Spirit was chastising me. As if I heard the Holy Spirit say, did you come for, for their praise or for my praise? Did you come to serve them or to serve me? And I'm telling you, it hurt. As soon as I vocalized that to my team, and I had to go back and say, team, forgive me. My heart is in the wrong place. And you know what I was doing? I was counting mint leaves. One for, one for me, one for the temple. One for me, one for the temple. That's what I was doing. I was no different from those Pharisees and this scripture right here. You know, I want to challenge you and challenge us as a church that we be a part of the most important things that God wants us to be a part of, the weightier things of God. You know, and I know I love the fact that I got my REACH shirt on today. It's a great reminder. I see a lot of REACH shirts on tonight. It's a great reminder that we got to go out and we got to serve. But have you ever gotten in a place where I was? And you start thinking, man, I cannot believe these people didn't do this, this, and this, and this. And you know what? When we do that, we're counting mint leaves. We're counting dill. We're counting the cumin. And I want to challenge us that we be a part of the weightier. We would give ourselves to the weightier things of God, the things that matter, and not count our mint leaves. Now, can I share a couple of things with you that might be a little bit painful? You have no choice in that, but thank you for that sure, because uh, I got the microphone, all right? And you know what? I'm sure people, when they heard Jesus talk of these seven woes, I'm sure someone who isn't familiar with the seven woes, you could be taken back with Jesus and his words, but his statements were said with love. They were said with, with, with greatest love intended. Didn't sound like it. He's calling them hypocrites. You're doing all these things. Woe to you. Man, that's, that's, that's heavy language back in these days. Woe to you. But they're tough love. It's a sign of love. And I'm sure we've all been recipients of tough love. I hope we have. So where do we tend to miss out on the weightier things of God and we focus on mint leaves? You know, I began to think about a few things in my life over the years of being a pastor. You know, uh, one of those, when I was involved with BCM ministry, and you know what sometimes what campus ministries can do? We can start saying, man, which campus ministry is better? Which one's better? Is it, is it BCM? Is it crew? Is it campus outreach? Is it CSF? And we start thinking, man, which one's better? I'll, I'll never forget a debate like two years ago at, at the EKU BCM and two students, and one was from another campus ministry and one was from the BCM, and they got into an actual debate about which campus ministry was better. And I thought, are you kidding me? And you know what? I mean, when we start doing that, guess what we're doing? Counting mint leaves. Man, we're missing. We're missing out. Listen, we do the same thing with churches. Which church is better in, in, in this town? Man, you are in rare form tonight. Okay. And I love the passion that we have. Yes, I love this church. 
But sometimes, if we're not careful, we start getting prideful about it. We don't want to do that, Miss Linda. We get prideful about it, and that begins to build up walls. And we begin to say things like, man, that church across town, that church across town, they're doing this and that. Man, we're, we're better than... And you know what happens when we're doing that? We're counting mint leaves. We're missing it. Man, we're missing it. So if that's you and you're doing that, stop it, you know? If you're church hopping around because your preference didn't get met, stop. I promise you, there are plenty of lost people in Warren County who need Jesus. There's plenty of lost people on our college campuses, right? There's plenty. And man, they need people who are about the things, the weightier things of God, things of justice and mercy and faithfulness and not counting mint leaves. Yeah, I think we tend to miss out on the weightier things of God when it comes to which theology is the correct one. Have you heard this before? And I want you to know something. I think the study of who God is is so important. We need to, be, we need to know what we believe and why based on what the Scriptures say. But sometimes we get into these theology wars about which one's, which one's correct. And I always get asked every I mean, every time by college students sometimes, hey, Jeff, what camp are you in? I'm like, camp? I'm in Jesus camp, so I want to be in, you know? And people are like, hey, what, what's, what's your theology, Jeff? And I'm like, well, you want to know my theology? And I'll tell it to you right now. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I, I, I could sing the rest of the song for you, but that's, that's my, but sometimes we get into these, we sometimes get into these debates and these, and these wars of theology and what theology is correct and what is not. And you know what? Lost people don't care about our theology. They want to know, are we about the weightier things of God, the things that matter most to God? When we begin to have conversations like that, and when someone else's name gets more attention than Jesus, Man, we're counting mint leaves. One for me, one for the temple. Listen to that scripture one more time. This is from a different translation from the message, and I love this. Listen to this. It says this. You're hopeless. Your religion, scholars and Pharisees, frauds. You keep, you keep meticulous account, account books, tithing on every nickel and dime that you get. But on the meat of God's law, things like fairness and compassion and commitment, the absolute basics, you carelessly take it or leave it. Careful bookkeeping is commendable, but the basics are required. Do you have any idea how silly you look? Writing a life story that's wrong from start to finish, nitpicking over commas and semicolons. You know, some of you might be in here, it might be offended because I use a different Bible translation. You know, sometimes we can get, we can start getting bent out of shape about which, which, uh, which, which translation's correct. You know, we got to use the, the, key, the KGV. We got to use the NIV. Or we got to use the ES. And we get, you know, I use the message. And I'm thinking, you know what? If people read the Bible because of the message, man, then praise God. Read the Bible. Use the message. If that gets them to the Word of God. But sometimes we get so focused even on things like Bible translations. And when we begin to do that, Counting mint leaves. One for me, one for the temple. That's what happens. And there are a lot of other things that I've observed over the years. And I can say all those things I just told you because I'm guilty of every single one of them. Every single one. I told you I'm a, I, was a re, I am a recovering Pharisee. Sometimes I struggle with that. I sometimes get fixated on the mint leaves and not the weightier things of God. And it's so easy to get distracted by things that are secondary and we miss out on majoring on the one thing, the one thing that we are all commanded to agree upon, and that is the lordship of Jesus Christ in each of our lives. That's what it is. And I believe, and if you believe, or whatever county, you know, Warren County, whatever county you live in, if you believe that's your mission field, then we don't have time or energy to waste it on the things that just don't matter. We don't have time. We, we, we need to be about the weightier things of God, the things, as Jesus said, 
the more important matters of the law. It's my prayer that we are paying attention to those who are around us, the people that we see. Sometimes we get so busy and and living life and living our life and doing our thing that we neglect those who are around us. Sometimes in our society, we get so focused on the individual that it's possible to miss out on the significant things, the weightier things. We've got to pay attention. Pay attention to the things of justice. Justice is about honoring humanity and looking out for the needs of every person. We all got needs. That's what, that's what, that's what justice is. Pay attention to the things of mercy. Mercy means having compassion and treating each other with kindness. You know, I think one of, the, one of the greatest apologetics that we can have for the Christian faith is simply to be kind to people. Be kind. To show them the love of Jesus in that way. But we got to pay attention because you know what? Jesus paid attention. He paid attention to those who were around him. Even when other people, even his own disciples, missed out on the people that Jesus was paying attention to. Jesus paid attention to the blind man who was on the side of the road who cried out while all the others said, hey, be quiet. Jesus has more important things to do. But Jesus paid attention to him. Jesus paid attention to the man who was sick for 38 years and he sat at the pool waiting for the angel to come stir the waters. And Jesus encouraged him, hey, take up his bed and walk. Jesus paid attention to him. Jesus paid attention to the woman who had the issue of blood and healed her illness and welcomed her to a a new life of faith. Jesus paid attention to her when a lot of people were around him. Jesus paid attention. Jesus paid attention to the woman at the well. He changed her life because he stopped and he listened. He really listened to her story when nobody else would. And the stories go on and on and on that we see in the scriptures. And that's why I say the more of this that is inside of us, it will transform us. It will change who we are. It will change how we see people. It will cause us to pay more attention to people. It will help us understand what are the weightier things of God, the things that matter the most. So this has got to be part of your life every single day. But not to the point where we get like Pharisees and scribes. And we're counting mint leaves. I want to encourage you to pay attention to people that you see every single day, whether it's in your neighborhood or wherever you work or wherever you're sitting next to in class or whoever it might be in your world that you just keep on seeing every single day for some reason. You know what that reason is? To share the gospel with them. Do you know somebody in your, in your life, in your area of influence, your sphere of influence who doesn't know Jesus? If you don't, start hanging out with unbelievers. Yes, that is the weightier things of God. And tonight, I don't know where you might be in your walk with God. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to know this. Know this. I'm speaking to those in here who have never invited Jesus into their lives. Because there was a time in my life when I felt really lonely, and I was really, really selfish. And then somebody introduced me to Jesus, and I learned that he forgave me of my sin, and I wanted to follow him. And since then, my life's been full of joy and purpose. And I wonder, do you have a story like that? I hope that you do. If you don't tonight, as we're about to enter into our time of altar, may you come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you're not sure what to do, I'll be hanging out and some other pastors will be hanging out up here. Come. Come and be saved. Or maybe tonight you're here and maybe maybe you're you're a recovering Pharisee as well and you just need to simply come and just pray at the altar and just pray and say, God, I've been a Pharisee. I've been so focused on my mint leaves than the things that really matter the most to you. Maybe you need need to simply deal with that. Or maybe you're here tonight and you have received Jesus and you've never been baptized before. Be baptized. What's stopping you that you get a chance to stand right up there and to identify with Jesus in his death and resurrection? 
I don't know what decision it might be for you. I just encourage you tonight just to be obedient to the Father. And let's be about, let's be a church that's about the weightier things of God, the things that matter the most. So Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you for, we thank you for your tough love and how you communicate to us. I thank you, Lord, for this church, and I pray that we will be about the things that matter the most to you. And God, I pray for the one who's in here tonight who does not know who you are, that they would just quit trying to fill their life with something that just keeps on leaving something that's void, that they would realize and know that they are without a relationship with you. And I pray they would come to know you and receive you God, we love you so much. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Folks, this time, let's have a time of altar. It's open to you. You come, you be obedient.